So um, symptomatic patient with unresectable metastatic colon cancer, primary in place, mm -hmm. symptomatic from the Mets, okay? RAS, all RAS wild type. What are you going to give them? Uh, first of all, if there is no urgency to remove the primary. Nope, yeah, I agree. agree with Dirk. We should do an aggressive systemic treatment and to test if the patient is responding Not to therapy. Ever, never going to be yeah, resectable. Yeah, okay. but at least tells you uh, how to treat the patient. Because if this is a patient symptomatic, either it will respond to therapy well and it will so have a good control. So you walk in the room, what do you tell them you're going to give them? So you have two options, basically. Uh, I would give a, a doublet, either Fulfiri or Fulfox, and then you can discuss for hours if hmm. Fulfox is better than Fulfiri or vice versa. Um, mostly is that if you choose Fulfiri, you are thinking like you can do irinotecan for longer. If you choose Fulfox, you know that you should stop Fulfox and then maybe you start with start and go procedures with, with oxaliplatin during treatment and then this is the patient, uh, if it's an oral well type, in which I preferentially will use either cetuxim or panitum or the anti gf antibody. And because do you match those with ERI, with cetux, and penitumumab with ox, or it doesn't really matter? You know, the full fox front line with penitumumab, no, full theory no, no, front line, you, know, you don't care. Today, I would say that when you have infusion of 5-FU in full fox or full theory, I will say that either Chetuxin or Panini were more or less are the same. Okay. I, I don't see no ma a major difference in reality. Um, and you're so, doing that front line for response, for, I mean, the main thing to kind of shrink the tumor for making asymptomatic? Yeah, that is the, the major. The, pro the major problem we have done is uh, how long you maintain treatment. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, and Dirk knows because he ran a trial for maintenance with uh, Bevacizumab uh, yeah. with or without chemotherapy. Uh, when you start with bevacizumab, you usually prolong the treatment with bevacizumab at least as long as possible. Ideally, mm -hmm. until progression alone or with five a few, you can discuss for, uh, for mm -hmm. years maybe. Mm -hmm. and you will never get an answer. With anti GFR monoclonals, basically we don't know when to stop. And usually we stop when we get the best response and we want to have a compromise between toxicity and response. And uh, no real ex exploration of uh, Having, for example, anti GF antibodies as long as possible was done. The only study we have is uh, the small sites coin B trial that was done in uh, in UK that was trying to address this uh, with a modified for Fox. Mm. At that time, it was was with Keras exon two L type only, and was giving some information within a randomized phase two trial that was a signal in favor of maintaining. Uh, the EGFR inhibitor, but this is not sufficient for me to say that I have to treat for 10 years the patient if it's not relapsing. Same patient, what are you going to do? In any case, in this patient, an anti EGF receptor antibody as first choice. Chemo doesn't matter. I would rather go for full FOX in this setting, uh, so anti EGFR plus full FOX. So neither of you said full FOX ERI. Yeah. Why not? This is your symptomatic patient. Yeah, this is the one I think yeah, of you know, for me problem, for full fox theory, Bev, or even, you know. If uh, the patient would be mutant, RAS mutant, this would be the know. first choice. If the liver function would allow the use of urine tecan, yeah. uh, this would be the first choice then. Uh, but if a patient is pan wild type or expanded RAS wild type, I'd rather go for an anti EGF receptor. Also, because if you do full theory, full fox, anti GFR, you are basically doing a, a triplet cytotoxic treatment yeah. already. So at least for this is sufficient. And then you will have a second chance by switching if it's progressing to the other doublet plus uh, anti-VGF uh, therapy. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, on some mm. level in that initial patient that I know we're going to do multiple lines of therapy, mm. if I give everything up front, then I, they're not eligible yeah. for second line yeah, studies. Yeah, and you know, it, that's kind of a crazy rationale though, but in some ways you want to bring in new therapies you know, for the, patients. The, but right? I think that concept of Fulfoxiri plus Beva, uh, Shizumab or Fulfoxiri plus Chetuxim or Panitumumab, could be a concept that should develop in a different way in a sense that you want to have a very short, very intense, full set of toxic treatment, let's say for two months, because you really need tumor shrinkage, and then you depotentiate taking out most of the drugs. Uh, I will never think I will use in clinical practice for Foxiri, even for Foxiri alone for six, seven, eight months. No, you can't. Uh, it's you impossible. Can't. So basically what you can think you can do for two or three months a very intensive treatment and then you should learn what is the best maintenance at that time. Yeah. And so, I don't know which is the best maintenance. So if I made the patient BRAF, I think I know what you'd say. Mutant? Yeah. 
you know, if there's a BRAF mutant, that is the only chance I have to treat them in first line. Symptomatic first line. I will use for foxidib bevacizumab okay. because I don't know what else could be what else useful. In, same? Any, in any case, and I think you'd also do the same, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. that's that's yeah. a patient who. Well, yeah. I was kind of there even without the BRAF, yeah, yeah, if yeah, you will. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But for all yeah. the negatives, a yeah. few cycles yeah. to get them off the yeah. ledge, if you will, yeah. uh, and then yeah. uh, uh, drive in. Let's talk maintenance a bit.